Um, and well, thank you for having me on this. It's really exciting to be sharing more about this project with a lot more people than in Singapore. So yeah, the, the project first started, I guess it was first seen at Objectives, both the exhibition and the photo book, but it was also launched at the Singapore Art Book Fair together with the book show, which is the publisher of the book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so, you know, on the first page of your book, you write a spoken word poem of sorts, if, if you could title that. And it reads, scoliosis patients have crooked mothers or crooked fathers. And it kind of goes on to then talking about various, maybe unsolicited advice that you have been given over the years, having been someone who has experienced scoliosis and also I guess in in ways unnecessary conversation that people find the need to engage in so would you say that this book is in a way your act of rebellion towards the incessant need for individuals to comment on one's experiences that might be different from their own so actually what you you see as the poem form that's actually taken from one of the medical books that I encountered wow. at Welcome. So it's interesting that you read it almost like a poem because I did take the paragraph. It was originally in like a normal text paragraph. And then I broke it down by the commas so that, you know, it forms this very elongated text. Um, but it wasn't written by me or mm -hmm. um, anyone that I know. It's written by the writer of the medical book. And I guess the reason why I used it as the first page of the book is because of the very strong visual imagery that it conjures up in your mind, even before you see any images. You know, mm -hmm. these are very strong um, words that anyone can use on someone with a crooked spine. For it to be written by a doctor, but of course, it's not in the doctor's words. It's not to make a bad commentary on people with scoliosis. Rather, he's trying to put himself in the shoes of the patients to understand what kind of discrimination they could be facing. And these are some of the comments that he has heard from people around him as he works in this field of scoliosis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... If you look closely at that page with the text, you will also notice this oval shape with an alphabet in it. So that oval shape with the alphabet is actually mm -hmm. part of a reference system that the designer Macarius has come up with. Mm -hmm. And it corresponds to the very last page of the first booklet where you see this almost like a reference. Yeah, every kind of Every um, black and white photograph and text taken from the medical books referenced back to this last page by the alphabet system. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's also a column that states what kind of manipulation has been done, if any. So mm -hmm. for example, I think for this first page, there is a text shuffle. Yeah. So Macarius okay. designed this to look almost like how a scientific document will look like. And he, he really wanted it to have that kind of very mathematical scientific system to how the images are tagged. Um, as for whether the project is, is kind of like an act of rebellion, I wouldn't say so much that it's rebelling against something, but rather I think it's trying to offer a different perspective on the medical condition because a lot of the information and content that we can find about scoliosis, they are all created by the medical field. And mm. of course, in the medicine world, they often strive to be as objective, as analytical as possible. And hence, I think for people with scoliosis, to you know first encounter images like that when you're trying to find as much information as you can can be a little bit um intimidating so i really wanted to provide a different kind of perspective to this whole condition perhaps a more humanistic one a softer one um, one that is guided more by real experiences than by you know evidences from the signs yeah and absolutely um i did very much notice um you know in fact in a clinical journal that you have kind of you've added that page into the photo book they write that the first rule 
for photographing a scoliotic patient is the patient must stand at ease with the legs straight and the arms hanging at the side in a relaxed position. So it that almost feels ironical of sort, you know, where it feels like the person is is, is more like a scientific product object. in a way. Yeah, like an object and 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 it and these are the rules to photograph this inanimate object in a way. Exactly. And, and and it's so interesting how without really using your own personal words, your photographs are the words that bring in the humanistic touch into this very scientific journal. And I feel like, um, would you say that in a way it was easier for you to photograph your experiences than maybe write about it? I would think so, because I think a picture is very much more open to interpretation than if I were to write something, because I'm, mm. I'm not a poet or a writer. And my first instinct in expression is always using images, whether, you know, it's made by a, a camera or not. So that kind of um, process in making images is it's also something that allows me to connect with strangers but bonded over the same condition and that medium it's really you know you don't have to speak too much about it it allows a connection to already be formed just by being present in the same space you know making an image together so yeah mm-hmm. yeah back to um the the text that you just mentioned again it's something that i found in one of the medical books and it is the exact text that inspired the title of the work um yes. rules for photographing a scoliotic patient and that is the very text that i guess it's underlying everything that i do because when i first read it exactly like how you express that's what i struggled with because as an image maker we make images and sometimes you don't really process what you're making. But mm. when you read a text like that, you are reminded so much of how an image is constructed. And when it, there is a set of instructions that are available for you know, medical photographers to kind of follow so that they can create a very objective image, definitely makes you feel like the human body has been reduced to a mere object for study. And that really fit back into my own practice in image making. And I questioned myself if I could make a different set of photographs that don't necessarily follow these rules at all, but still be able to reflect scoliosis in some way or another. So I think that particular text is very important in propelling the entire project. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, kind of going to the design of the book, I did notice that the the book case in itself, the way that it's held together uh, by the cover, it, it feels like, you know, the, the Velcro that binds it together, it yeah. really corresponds a lot to the drawings as well as the photographs within the book where it's it, it shows a binding of sorts even when the binding kind of goes through the backs of the the photographs itself yeah. it it gives a, a a lot more tactile feel to the imagery so i was just wondering if you know h- how you led to the decision making process behind making that the form of the book um i think that really came out from the discussions with macarius the designer and um, Macarius, he really wanted to think about the book as the body and mm. how similar to how every book has a book spine, he wanted to reference that spine to the human spine. And when we look at the book cover, mm. these three Velcro straps um, actually correspond to the Velcro straps that you mm. find in a brace. So this is a scoliosis brace that uh, many patients will be prescribed um, to wear. And many of them will have to put this on for about 22 hours a day. 
um, and it is basically customized to every person's body and um, mm -hmm. already inbuilt with the kind of um, corrections that is required. So you would often have to put this on and no matter what you're doing, whether you are doing sports or you're in school, you're you know out with your family and in a way it's a plastic brace that it's confining your body conditioning it for most part of the day so in that sense um when macarius was thinking about the book form um and because we have two separate um, booklets that needed to be held together he thought that it would be um, nice to have this um very minimalist form that also does what a scoliotic brace does and in, in, in a case, it's a reflection of what scoliotic patients have to go through. And even the sound of opening it up, mm. that sound of it, it's actually quite a violent and aggressive sound that the book can make. So in designing it, there's a lot of consideration in how the significance of the book object can correlate with the subject matter that we're looking at. Mm, absolutely and um so you know uh and and you did talk about this earlier uh about uh, you know i did notice one of the first things that i noticed in the book is the curved tree being pulled by the ropes um you know and it's something that really stood out to me and i i don't know if if it stood out because it was it was it it felt like the tree in itself is is living right and and then to kind of pull it back but the tree can't communicate and the tree can't talk and a lot of the figures within the book itself like even the human drawings uh, I did notice that in, in the journals even though they seem to be being strapped on and it obviously looked rather painful but there's this odd smile plastered across the faces of the drawings so that's something that I did notice and Essentially, I guess I guess that's just a comment on on how stark the difference was uh, in the treatment of the medical journals versus your photography, which was a lot softer. Mm -hmm. Did you also were there any self portraits? Uh, I I didn't ask you this earlier. It's not in the book itself, but the very uh -huh. first body that I photographed was my own, um, mm. because I wanted to understand a little bit more about how that that relationship with the camera, between the camera and my body would feel like. Um, mm. But eventually I didn't put my own portrait into the book because I didn't want to complicate the whole autobiographical aspect of, of the mm. photo book. So I kept it purely yeah. to people that I worked with. And, you know, the gaze is, it's, it's more um, straightforward. It's between me and the person being photographed. Yeah. Okay. 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 And, but, um, but you're very I, observant in in <laughs> in the way like how some of the old photographs the patients often have this weird smile almost almost like posing for for that image that is being taken and i think it's very mysterious because we don't know what's going on when that picture is being made and you also can't tell if that's a a, a face of um agony or it's you know a natural smile so i think that's what makes these archive images um, so intriguing to begin with yeah completely it also kind of i guess puts me to and concluding thoughts in terms of what made you choose the photo book form to talk about this project is it is it just the fact that you know you are a photographer and that is your means of expression or or would you say that uh, there is something further with with the form of the photo book that kind of drew you to it i think the the book as a form has always been very close to my heart because it's a way that i structure my thoughts around so sometimes i would use the form of the book to make Im re make relations um, across the images that i have and it's not for the purpose of publishing a book at all it's just to create a flow and 
make sense out of what I have in my hands. So I think because it's such an instinctive form for me to incorporate into my process of thinking, eventually as a final outcome in my projects, it's also something that comes very organically. So I think most of my projects would end up in some form of a book form. Yeah. Mm. So it's Mm. not just because um, I make images. Um, I think it's also perhaps something that's got to do with my parents because both my parents, um, as I was growing up, they were working in the print industry and um, the affinity with paper, with book forms, it has just been so ingrained in my life since I was a child. So Mm -hmm. it has become something that's very natural. And I think conceptually, I also really find it intriguing how we can deconstruct the idea of what a book is when you're making a photo book. Because everyone is familiar with what a book is. You've held a book before, you've read one before, whether you like it or not, maybe it's a textbook that you encounter in school. But because of our familiarity with the structure of a book, it makes it so fun to be able to break out of that conventional idea of what it is. Yeah. So for many reasons, (laughs) that's why I, I really enjoy working with the book. Yeah, and and just kind of going back to uh, what we were talking about off record to just kind of put it in uh, for the viewers, but we just started talking about this. This conversation began by talking exactly about this: how the book, the photo book form, can be so many different things, uh, and still outside of the world that is already kind of um, introduced to it, the photo book form is is a very it's a very linear object with large photographs, uh, beautiful looking landscapes, often the perfectly composed imagery um, that sits very neatly onto these pages. And so I guess I guess our purpose of having these conversations and continuing these conversations is hopefully to introduce this idea that the photo book can be so many different things and it can mean so many different things depending on how you as an image maker and a photo book maker would like to put it out into the world and and then how one as a viewer would be receptive to it so thank you so much uh, for being a part of that entire conversation it's my pleasure yeah Okay. Uh, do you have any final thoughts or do you think that we've covered everything that we've spoken, that you want to talk about? Well, I, I think there are a lot of details in, in the book that will definitely require a longer conversation. But of course, the photo book, like every other medium, is open to interpretation. So, you know, I would really invite um, anyone who's interested in this project to get your hands on a copy, a browsing copy and, and you know, have spend some time with it. And if anyone has any questions or um, would like to discuss more about the topics that I've been exploring, um, I'll be very happy to connect with them, um, maybe via email. Yeah. Super. Thank you so much. And I look forward to everything that you, you are going to work on in the future. Thank you. 